how did you come to be in, in Papua? And, um, and, and let me ask, like, what did you learn there? Just for people who, you have that um, essay that we published, um, uh, what was it? Like, I'm not writing in the jungle, I think it was called, or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so what did you take away from your time? It seemed like you sort of, in a weird way, fit more in the jungle in the middle of nowhere with very little access to technology than you do um, here on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. I, 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 yeah, unfortunately, maybe lamentably true. I don't know. Uh, I kind of have a pet theory that since everyone's life is finite, you know, we got about what a men clock in at eighty-two years at, at the outside now, and and women live longer, of course, because they're not as reckless and stupid as we are. Well, it's the testosterone, uh, actually, but yeah. <laughs> okay, let's yeah, go with the yeah, stuff. It's toxic. It's toxic. So we're filled with a toxic. You know, toxic masculinity. But anyway, yes, it's actually, chemically true. <laughs> it is chemically true. It is. Oh, that's hilarious. That that is an idea right there. Yeah, yeah. It takes four years off our lives, something like that. Yeah. So I went there because my wife was, uh, my ex-wife was an impressive person, and and she uh, got a job at a mining company in the middle of the jungle in Papua, and I was in the midst of a great job that I loved, you know, I was working in, in living in Bethesda, uh, working in Bethesda, living in Tacoma Park uh, in Maryland and uh, loving it. But yet the opportunity to go there was, it was, it was too crazy to pass up. You, you, you kind of have to do it. So we moved there on like a one or two year contract and then it just kept getting extended. So essentially one year became five. And then I just became in, completely ensconced because, you know, the, you know, the, the series of African migrations and the time that they left and from the Eastern African migrations, uh, I think it was number two or maybe it's number one. I mean, went, went to Papua. Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been people there for 70 some thousand years, you know. And for, you know, uh, a U.S. perspective, we've had people, we think, for 15,000 years. Right. But that's still being backdated all the time. Uh, but we know that that's one of the earliest places. And so it. It was just so fascinating and. Uh, being so completely otherized was such an amazing experience. I mean, it wasn't easy. Right. I mean, culture shock is real. You spend about a month. Losing your mind. You know what? I mean, I didn't see a movie, a proper movie. There was nowhere to go. I mean, every day you would wake up and you're in the jungle, man. That you're in the jungle, <laughs> and you hang out with Seventh Day Adventists from some remote island in Indonesia. I mean, Indonesia is huge, and it's actually quite pluralistic, even though it's the most populous Muslim country in the world. Again, you've got a lot of Christians there. Most Papuans are Christians. So I would have to like attend, say, pig roasting ceremonies, which is what the Papuans love doing in the presence of like 30 Muslims who do not like this at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, needless to say. And you're like, wow, this the cultural overlap. And I mean, it's just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. As you know, now Flores, man, you know, we now know that there was a. There was a homo sapien who was about three and a half feet tall. Mm -hmm. And he was found now in the Flores, right? Which is right there in, in, in the Papuan area. Uh, and I went up into. So, yeah, I mean, having grown up in Nebraska, where, you know, Minnesota seems exotic, right? Colorado, oh, Jesus. California is a different country <laughs> if you're born in Omaha, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, uh, it was absolutely fascinating. Um, do, you, yeah. do you have any poems about it that you can, you can share? Uh, let's see, number, uh, page 20. Okay. And this is kind of the point, actually. Uh, so this is nice. This is called uh, Like a Bavarian Cafe in a Mall in Jakarta. Uh, Mid-December and the mall is full of Muslims in Santa suits with black and Peters waving switches and sacks. 
which causes both of us to marvel at how adroitly we colluded with the Dutch, imported the secular like spices or slaves. Jesus, I say, just look at the faux snow for proof, or SpongeBob there dancing for Javanese applause. And we're in a mall because everyone is, because Jakarta is a city of interiors and crowds, because crowds in this century create interiority, and though we are where we are, I still say, here we are, imagine. And she nods at this since we've been married 13 years and so have been, uh, have learned when to indulge or ignore each other's obviousness. We can eat snitchel tonight, but we can't find it silly. And I know that later all of this must be analogy. Someone said that when the natural becomes mechanical, we laugh. My research suggests that when the opposite happens, we laugh even harder, and then we shake our hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, like a Bavarian cafe in a mall in Jakarta from uh, the Corpse Post.